वेलकम गाइस वेलकम टू टुडेज डिस्कशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम वेरी सॉरी फॉर बीइंग लेट नाउ आई एम बैक विथ ए न्यू टॉपिक नाउ टुडेज टॉपिक इज क्वाइट क्रिटिकल एंड दैट्स व्हाई टुडे आवर लेक्चर विल बी अ लिटिल बिट लॉन्गर देन अदर लेक्चर्स नाउ टुडे वी शैल डिस्कस अबाउट मल्टीपोल many of you have asked me to do a separate video on multiple expansion so guys this video is for you now what is a multipole actually a multipole is a combination of several poles see multipole means multiple poles so it is a combined action of monopole dipole quadrupole octopole and so on so it is not a single point charge effect or a dipole effect as a whole this is a cumulative effect now see monopole where the potential v varies like 1 over r we all know that for dipole this potential varies with 1 over r square now for quadrupole v varies as 1 over r cube see there is two type of quadrupole this one is linear quadrupole this one is rectangular quadrupole so there is no hard and fast rule that quadrupole seems like this one or this one okay so it can be like a rectangle or like a linear form and an octopole the potential varies as 1 over r to the power 4 there may be several higher order terms so in that cases the potential v will vary like 1 over r to the power 5 1 over r to the power 6 etc and etc but in our discussion we will uh, restrict ourselves only for this three monopole dipole and quadrupole octopole case is rather very com uh, complex for your standard and actually this quadrupole and octopole both are widely used in nuclear physics rather i say higher physics now what is the basic idea between all these things the basic idea rely on the fact that where the observer lies now as i said before the multiple pole or the multipole is a cumulative effect now when this p this this p is the observer now when this p is far far away from any charge distribution of arbitrary shape now this distance matters then okay and this arbitrary shaped charge distribution will act as a point charge what will we get uh, at p the potential it will be a monopole term because this will act as a point charge but suppose the observer is coming closer in this picture it is much closer than that one and in the third picture it is way closer than the other two when the observer comes closer and closer the higher order terms like the dipole terms quadrupole terms octopole terms will come into play now why because for this case you cannot say that this arbitrarily shaped charge distribution will act like a monopole or a dipole or a quadrupole or a particular octopole because why because there are several point charges here 
they may form a dipole they may form a linear quadrupole or an octopole everything okay so the potential at p will be a cumulative effect of the whole charge distribution in this case the potential is no more varies against 1 over r rather the higher order terms like this 1 over r square 1 over r cube 1 over r to the power 4 and 1 over r to the power 5 like etc and etc will come into play so this is the basic idea between uh, sorry this is the basic idea of the whole thing now before i further proceed if you are new to my channel then please like comment and share my video and for the regular updates please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell okay so we are back now now see in figure one this is the arbitrarily shaped charge distribution where this is a arbitrary point and there is a volume element dv around this point this is our observation point uh, sorry this is our origin point and this is our observation point in some books you can find uh, that o is within the charge distribution okay that's fine because o is an arbitrary origin it may or may not lie within the shaded region i have uh, considered the o here okay you can consider o within the uh, charge distribution but one fact must be same what is the fact the distance r prime must be very small against this r okay why this type of assumption is taken here wait wait and watch okay so referring from figure one the angle between r prime and r is this theta and this one is r minus r prime obviously it is a result of triangle law okay now we shall find the potential at p due to this elementary volume which will act like a point particle now for now so so phi can be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught in volume integration over rho dv by r minus r prime. Now in my um, previous slide, I have denoted the potential as v, but to clear the confusion, I have denoted here this potential as phi, whereas v and dv is the volume and the elementary volume here okay so don't get confused with the first slide and second slide okay now let's do some mathematics see these are mod of r minus r prime can be rewritten as r minus r prime square and then we can rearrange this into this here we have just uh, take a common 1 over r and the whole thing becomes this type okay now where from this cos theta comes see for yourself r dot r prime sorry i say r dot r prime so what is the uh, angle cos theta so it can be written as r r prime cos theta now as I have told you before that the fact that R prime must be very small than R. Now see this will help you here because 
we shall expand this like this thing just put x equals to this whole thing and rearranging this whole thing into this one now we shall expand this thing like 1 plus x to the power minus half and we all know the expansion looks like this but the whole theory is dependent upon the fact that x this x is less than not only less less much much less than 1 see r prime is much much less than r so r prime square by r square is very much less than 1 moreover r prime by r is also much less than 1 so if r prime is not so small than r or r prime uh, becomes equal or say greater than r we we cannot expand like this so that's why it was very important that r prime must be very small than the r clear okay now we shall expand and then rearrange the 1 over r minus r prime term like this one i know i know you are a little bit confused here because there are several step jumps but believe me if i do the every step here then my lecture will be a one hour discussion and you guys will be bored out of that i know that so what is the solution then you have to go through my notes and uh, in my notes i have written down all the necessary steps there is no step jump there so you can go through that and to get my notes uh, do one thing go to the comment box below and put your name and email address there i shall send you the notes at your mailbox okay now see this rewritten form has a particular symmetry now as if i know this thing will come this thing will come and this thing will come and i have put the whole symmetry here but why to explain this why i have to discuss one more thing with you that is the legendre polynomial rather i say the very famous legendre differential equation differential equation actually is a very vast subject in mathematics or say mathematical physics because our mechanics as well as whole physics relies upon several types of differential equations in physics what we do we create some differential equation and then solve it and then explain it now this differential equation is still a topic of research because there are several special type of differential equations for several special type of situations like legendre differential equation see this is a special form now this differential equation is one of the form of special differential equations it can all it can uh, be solved by a part, only a particular way that legendre have invented with his own function or say polynomial this polynomial can be expressed like this one now believe me guys from this to this there are huge number of steps and huge number of uh, complex mathematics we are not dealing with that because this is not a hardcore mathematics class this is physics class all we are concerned about the outcome of this 
solution okay so we shall not discuss with any of the solution types or polynomial types because there are several uh, special type of differential equations and several uh, special type of uh, polynomials and there are numerous ways through uh, them we can found the solution like this there are several other forms of this legendary polynomials too but this is one of the simplest form that you can understand for now okay now put n equals to 0 what will we get p0 x 2 to the power 0 0 factorial this to the power 0 this to the power 0 so the whole thing converges to 1 4 equals to 1 p1 x equals to 2 to the power 1 1 factorial ddx of x square minus 1 do this mathematics for your own or go through my notes and then see it is x if we go further for n equals to 2 n equals to 3 term we can achieve p2 x equals to this one p3 x equals to this form now let us replace our x with a cos theta term what will happen p0 or p0 cos theta equals to 1 p1 cos theta what was our p1 x this is x so what will be p1 cos theta that will be cos theta now p2 cos theta half of 3 cos cos theta minus 1 p3 cos theta like this one half of 5 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta now why we are discussing this polynomial suddenly because this legendary polynomial is very useful for our multiple expansion see how this was our 1 over r minus r prime okay rather say rearranged form now see it can be further rearranged by legendary polynomials now what is one that can be written by r prime by r to the power 0 p0 cos theta now what will be this cos theta that is p1 cos theta what is the value of p2 cos theta see 3 cos theta, theta minus 1 by 2 and p3 cos theta that is 5 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta by 2 so now you can understand that i have done all those steps all those rearrangements on purpose because i want to invite the legendary polynomials in our equation now the above equation can be further uh, rearranged by this thing this is a concise thing n equals to 0 to infinity see 0 to further steps r prime by r to the power n p n of cos theta okay now let us put this one into our phi term and the potential becomes yeah i know that it is a very uh, cumbersome and uh, quite big to cram but you have to cram this one because this is the ultimate potential this is the multiple potential okay so this is r to the bar n and there is one that's why r to the bar n plus one and this is row of r prime from previous one and this is dv so this can be further rewritten as phi naught phi one phi two etc and etc what is the phi naught and phi one and phi two see for yourself our phi naught refers to a monopole term now let us put zero at n one over four pi epsilon naught this is r only so this is r this is 1 this is p0 cos theta that is 1 this is rho dv so this thing transforms to this thing for n equals to 0 this is called monopole term okay now if we put n equals to 1 and n equals to 2 this thing will transform into this one this and this one 
the second one is called dipole term and third one is called quadrupole term now these three equations are very very much important why because in your mathematical situations rather say in your exams questions are asked in a particular manner rho is given a particular form of rho is given to you in any coordinate system okay and questions are asked what is the dipole potential term or what is the quadrupole term or determine the uh, quadrupole potential term for this charge distribution defined by rho is equals to this one so, so it is a very common question that rho will be given and these three this one one between these three terms can be asked and it is believe me it is very important question for your term exams now one by one we shall discuss about each term okay now let's come first for the monopole term it is a rather easy term because actually there is no n term actually there is no r prime term simply 1 over 4 pi epsilon not r volume indication rho dv what is volume indication of rho dv actually this is the total charge q okay so phi naught equals to you know your known term q by 4 pi epsilon not r and this q is sometimes called monopole moment so in your term exam if there is a question which is asked on monopole moment don't get confused it actually is the total charge that is rho dv okay now let's move on to our dipole term this is our figure one you are familiar with it now now what if the total charge is zero how suppose in this charge distribution there is no monopole or there is everything is in dipole form dipole form means two different charges or rather say two equal and opposite point charges are kept separated by a very small distance plus q and minus q separated by a very small distance say d so what will be the total charge plus q and minus q sum over plus q sum over charges equal to plus q minus q equals to zero so the actual total charge is zero but there is a potential what is that potential that is our dipole potential so in that case the dominant term will be our dipole term from our previous expressions phi 1 equals to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught r square integration over r prime cos theta rho dv it can be rewritten as this r cap dot r prime see for yourself r cap is along this direction r prime is along this direction and theta is the angle between them so from the idea of dot product we can easily rewrite this one as this one and further we can write our dipole potential term as this one what is this small p this small p is actually the dipole moment of the charge distribution given to you and how it has been written p equivalence to r prime rho dv integrated over v so now suppose there is a question that tells you rho is given rho is equal to this type of and the question may be like uh, what is the dipole moment of the charge distribution or determine the potential due to the dominant term so you have to determine what is the dominant term and then you have to determine the potential okay now let's move on to the most important of all the quadrupole term why most important wait wait just wait but before that 
we have to go through some cumbersome mathematics and this mathematics will be a little bit complex for you your graduation standard because quadruple moment is a topic which is discussed both in your graduation topic and your post graduation topic now for the time being let's proceed like our previous term like phi 2 equals to this one now we know that we can always rearrange this thing like r prime square cos square theta where 1 over r square is again a new term keeping this thing as this thing as this thing now why i shall invite a new term when i am busy with so much mathematics to do this dot what is r dot r prime that is r r prime cos theta what is missing here only r square is missing here so we have invited this one over r square to compensate the dot product now from this line things will change a little bit because from this one we shall use some tensorial format like this one let x y z is denoted by numbers like x1 x2 and x3 so our r dot r prime whole square can be written as sum over i equals to 1 to 3 x i x i prime whole square now see this i equals to if this i equals to 1 this is x1 x1 prime so this is the x component of this one r dot r prime if i equals to 2 this is x2 x2 prime the y component of this dot product if i equals to 3 this is x3 x3 prime this is the z component of this one so actually we are writing a concise form of this thing into the component terms and if we expand more then see this whole square can be further expanded like another summation over j this j is also equals to 1 to 3 so this r dot r prime square can be expanded and written like sum over i sum over j for one term that is x i x y prime and the for other term that is x j x j prime similarly we can expand this r square r prime square as this one i have not written in each summation i equals to 1 2 3 1 2 3 because that will be some boring task okay now this thing means sum over i sum over j x i x j delta i j now this delta i j is quite a new term for you because it is actually Kronecker delta if i not equals to j then delta i j equals to 0 if i equals to j, j then delta i j equals to 1 now if we can expand this one what will it look like x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square or rather i say x1 x1 plus x2 into x2 plus x3 into x3 or x1 into x1 delta 1 1 plus x2 plus x2 plus delta 2 2 plus x3 plus x3 delta 3 3 so what are the values of delta 1 1 1 delta 2 2 1 delta 3 3 1 one more time i am reminding you that details of, of this mathematical expressions and uh, uh, steps are uh, in my notes only because you know how much time we have uh, been in our lecture okay so we shall put this term and this term into our quadrupole potential term 
i know this is a quite a bit complex looking term but believe me it's not complex what we have done we have done we have just separated these uh, summations and the integration within the integration there is the form x i x sorry x i prime x j prime and delta i j r prime square now don't get confused because see for yourself the r prime coordinates always always remain within the integration and r components are out of the integration that's why this x i and x j are here but the prime coordinates are within the integration more concisely it can be written as q i j now what is this q i j q i j equals to this mathematical term which is actually a tensorial term it is quad it is called quadruple moment tensor okay actually it is a 3 by 3 matrix form like this one because if we can expand this ij to uh, from 1 to 3 we can find nine terms see for yourself q11 q21 q31 then q12 q22 q32 and as q13 q23 q33 okay now there are some characteristics of this qij tensor or i say qij matrix whatever that is it is a symmetric matrix and the trace of this matrix is zero now for our mathematical or physical purpose we can further reduce this matrix for our own purpose like we can make all the off diagonal elements like q12 or q21 q13 q31 q23 q32 by proper putting uh, by proper terms or putting proper values we can make these off diagonal elements zero so what will be look like that it will be a 3 by 3 matrix with only these principal terms again the trace is zero so there is an again um one more symmetry see for yourself q11 plus q22 equals to minus q33 again there is a one more possibility for simplification like this q33 actually is the most important term because this q33 is along the z axis see for what z component why this q33 is uh, very much important you will find the answer at the last of our lecture now we have to do some more uh, transitions like q11 equals to q22 equals to minus of half q33 it comes from the fact that the trace is zero we are putting q11 and q q22 by symmetry here so what are we left of we are left with just q33 term if we can determine what is the value of the q33 we can determine q11 and q22 as well as the whole tensor qij okay now this qij we can write this qij as see what is for 33 x3 prime x3 prime minus delta 33 r prime square what is x3 prime that is z prime simply so x3 prime into x3 prime that is z prime square here and delta 33 equals to 1 so our q33 looks like this one 
and this one is rather more and more simple than the previous qij and it is uh, very easy to integrate too like this is called the quadrupole moment see the term it is not quadrupole moment tensor qij this one this one is called quadrupole moment tensor okay but this one is only called quadrupole moment so beware of your exams in uh, because the questions may be very tricky read it thoroughly whether qij has been asked or q33 has been asked read it very carefully what is the language whether they are asking for quadrupole moment tensor or quadrupole moment only now what will happen if this q33 is a positive quantity then the distribution will look like a prolate shaped distribution what if it becomes negative it will look like a oblate shaped distribution and what if q3 equals to zero yes you are guessing right it's a sphere good but still we are confused why to use these peculiar distributions actually this quadrupole moment term is very widely used in nuclear physics rather i say this q33 term determines about the size and shape of the nucleus in your postgraduate physics you are familiar with deuteron problem and deuteron nucleus size problems in that cases q33 is the main factor in deuteron problems you have to evaluate this q33 if q33 is positive then nucleus will look like this type if it is negative then nucleus will look like this one and the ideal one that is q33 equals to 0 so that the nucleus will look like uh, perfect spherical so there may be some deformation in your nucleus and to evaluate that deformation q33 comes into play it is actually very much important in your deuteron physics and widely in nuclear physics okay this is the end of our today's discussion hope you have find it useful for you if you have any doubt or any queries let me know in the comment box okay guys thank you for watching see you soon